So welcome to everyone. We will uh, go ahead and get started. Good afternoon and welcome to today's Social Gov webinar, Deep Fakes and Social Media. Today we will be hearing about the threat of deep fake technology on social media and how to prepare your agency if you are targeted. Today's event is being recorded and will be posted to digital.gov after the event. A link for the live captioning is included in the chat box. Please note that all attendees are muted during this session and are highly encouraged to ask questions during the chat box. And we will get to those questions at the end of the event during the Q&A portion. Thank you again for joining us. And with that, I'll introduce our presenter today, Alex Cohen. Alex is the Director for Emerging Technologies in the Office of Government-Wide Policy at the US General Services Administration. Prior to this, he ran the Innovation Center for the US Census Bureau, where he oversaw more than 1,000 IT projects and saved over $100 million for the Bureau. Before moving into project and program management, Alex was a software engineer. He's led projects for the National Academy, the Department of Energy, and the Federation of American Scientists. In addition to his technical background, he has led digital communications offices. He has a BS in computer science from UMass Amherst and a master's in public policy from George Mason. Alex lives in Washington, DC with his wife and his son. Welcome, Alex. Thank you, Gabrielle. So thank you so much uh, for inviting me here. And I'm very excited to speak with everyone today and to really have a great conversation around this new technology and kind of what people can do without it. With that being said, let me go ahead and share my screen and we will go ahead and get started. So hopefully everyone can see this okay. Uh, as, as Gabrielle mentioned, I'm Alex Cohen. I'm the director of the uh, Emerging Technology Division at the General Services Administration. We're a relatively new office. We were created about a year and a half ago to set out to be kind of proactive uh, in terms of drafting policy and best practices around emerging technologies and help agencies respond and make better use of new technology. So with that being said, let's talk about deep fake. So if you guys have all come to the session, I suspect you have some idea of what this is. So we're gonna have a little bit of technical, although really we're gonna spend most of our time talking about how to use it, or excuse me, how to respond to it. So uh, deep fake makes use of artificial intelligence to manipulate audio and video content to promote misinformation. At the highest level, that's kind of what it is. Uh, I'm going to show some examples just so that we get a kind of sense because this is doesn't look like cheesy Photoshop, right? This doesn't look like someone just putting someone's head on someone else's body. This really makes use of artificial intelligence to make very um, compelling looking images. So I'm going to share two um, just uh, oh. so. <laughs> oh. Sports and TikTok fans. If you like what you're seeing, just wait till what's coming next. <laughs> I'm gonna show you some magic. I'm gonna pause there. I'll show the other one for Mark Zuckerberg just for a moment. Imagine this for a second. One man with total control of billions of people's stolen data, all their secrets, their lives, their futures. I owe it all to Spectre. Spectre showed me that whoever controls the data controls the future. So imagine this for a second. So I want to show those just for briefly, so people have a sense of kind of what we're talking about. In that first video with um, the, the imitation Tom Cruise, you saw him moving around. The face stayed, you know, correctly superimposed. 
you saw him put on glasses, take them off, he had motion. Uh, and the artificial intelligence was used to map a, his face onto the actual actor playing Tom Cruise in that place. Um, and so these look real, they, these look convincing. Um, we should also talk a little bit briefly, uh, not only can uh, deepfake be used to generate, you know, kind of faces on bodies, it can be used for audio generation, uh, as well as, uh, you know, information such as maps is a, a recent example. you are able to use deepfake technology to generate synthetic maps, uh, which matters, again, if you want to, if people are creating synthetic objects uh, for misinformation purposes. At the technical level, where it uh, uses artificial intelligence behind the scenes, composed basically of two pieces. One part which attempts to use images, um, so for the, for the deep fake uh, face mapping stuff, it uses lots and lots of images to figure out how to correctly position the face based on the actor uh, underneath. And then it uses a, a critic to assess those to determine if it's being successful and it uses that to iteratively improve itself and, and make better and better uh, mappings. Um, so that's going to come up a little bit later in terms of talking about who is going to be a, a likely target of this sort of stuff. Remember, it has to learn from having lots of images, which video does uh, provide. So uh, again, like I said briefly, uh, not, while it's commonly associated with video, the same technology can create sound recordings, geospatial data, and a, a wide range of other things. Um, but we're going to be talking mostly about the, the, the more common uh, stuff. In terms of creating deepfake, it's not hard to do. Uh, think about it, basically, if, if you have the capacity to make uh, and edit videos, you more or less have the capacity to generate deepfake content. Um, the Deepfake Lab is an open source product, free, uh, comes with, uh, with, I think, Kevin Spacey and uh, imaging, usually Tom Cruise or um, Nicholas Cage, I think, are all the common ones that can be easily imported and you can start generating. But again, if you have the capacity to edit videos, you have the capacity to generate deepfake content. Also, unlike, you know, the, you know, the Forrest Gump images from, you know, the 90s, uh, this can be done on a laptop, right? Not, no special hardware really required. It's, it's relatively within the grasp of anyone who wants to spend a little bit of time learning how to do this. Uh, detecting. So unfortunately, detecting is really hard and it's getting harder by the day. Um, as it, and it's, we basically have a situation where it's the folks who are trying to detect it are competing with the folks who are trying to make it better and better. And it goes back and forth or, or, or kind of who has the advantage. Right now, there is no really good way of detecting these things. Uh, depending on how they're made, there may be some odd uh, artifacts, odd shadows, mouth movements, lack of blinking. Uh, some inconsistencies that if you're trying to prove something was fake may matter, like if, you know, it was shot during a sunny day and at that time in that location, it's purporting to be it was rainy, you may be able to use those sort of things to detect that you're dealing with synthetic uh, content, but uh, they're getting better as you saw from the Tom Cruise one, uh, you know, you didn't really see any of those kind of artifacts, it looked really uh, authentic. I will say there's even better examples of deep fakes out there. Uh, for this presentation, we actually had a difficult time finding ones that you didn't have bad language or, or other content that wouldn't have been appropriate for work. Uh, you know, I, I do recommend there, there's a fantastic Jordan Peele Obama one, although I think there's some swearing in it. Uh, so probably if you're interested, look at it outside of work. It's from a few years ago. Recently, uh, BBC did one with the Queen uh, and a fake Christmas message. Um, again, had some language unit issues, which is why I'm not showing it here, but if you're interested in looking kind of at other ones, uh, there's plenty of great examples out there. Um, so let's talk a little bit now about the uh, response to this technology. So what we're recommending is that agencies have a plan to detect it. Um, likely targets are anyone where there's a lot of video content of that person, maybe your press officer, it may be your secretary or undersecretary, they've given talks. Um, and agencies need to be start preparing to, to deal with this. While we haven't seen it used yet at, against an agency, uh, our office basically thinks this is simply a matter of time. Um, we have seen it starting to show up in the political space, uh, although mostly in other countries, um, but, and mostly it's for entertainment purposes rather than for maliciousness, but there's really no reason it uh, will necessarily continue in that way, and we're advising every agency to start having a plan. So what does that look like? Um, Start setting up web monitoring. I mean, simple examples, automated searches, Google alerts, smart alerts, you know, 
if you see mentions of your you know, officers showing up and they haven't done a press event recently, that's the sort of thing you should want to pay attention to, right? See if people are respond. See if people are talking about something you know brand new that you know you guys are not are not aware of. Um, in addition, have pre-drafted responses that clearly indicate that content is not authentic. The last thing you want to be doing is coming up with what is a deep fake. This wasn't the person. Have that all ready to go. Have some evergreen content sitting at your agency that basically lays out what this is. Uh, you know, tied to your agency mission. You know, the Department of Energy is responsible for X, Y, Z. This was not authentic. Here's what this was. Um, if you determine a response is needed, uh, be prepared to create, talk about how it was created. Uh, also be prepared to provide links to authentic information, right? Link back to the energy.gov website if it's energy. I'm just picking an energy because I used to work there, but or GSA's website or, or whatever. But be prepared to provide that. Uh, not mentioned here, but also uh, try to respond in the same way. If it was a video deep fake, consider producing a real video uh, of the act of the same person uh, or a different person talking about it and be prepared to respond. If it was on Facebook, be prepared to respond on Facebook as well, but have that ready to go. Um, keep your agency plans up to date, refresh it annually um, based on your leadership changes, online activities, right? If you start having certain uh, people talking more, you know, start being prepared to respond if that person's uh, image is used inappropriately. Uh, educate your employees as well on what this is, how it's discovered so that, you know, you may get a report from someone who's in some other community online in a social media environment and, and help them help it bring it to your attention earlier uh, so you can respond uh, in a more timely way.